I'm watching Stan and Charlie figure out the focus issues, and I notice that they are professionals in that when they step, they move their feet very slowly, which people do in recording studios, video studios, because if your foot catches a cord and flings a camera across the room, that's considered a bad thing. Yeah, we should be good now. We're recording, we're recording, we're all recording. Videos, are all cameras recording? That one's not good. <sighs> <laughs> yes. All right, we'll get this, we'll get it. Welcome back to season two of the Draftsman Podcast. Stan Prokopenko and I are here to help you get better as a creative achiever. How are you, Stan? I'm great. I missed you so much. I haven't seen you in four months. I haven't seen you in four months either. You kept your hair. What? And you did it. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? Did you think we I was going to age? You shave your head. Well, it just felt like a long time. We were used to seeing each other so often and talking so often. And now here we are and it's all a whole new world. Oh, I'm glad to be back doing this with you. Yeah, me too. I'm surprised we got all the way to season two. Yeah. Because you're, how, how old are you now? I'm 61. Holy crap. I know. How many do you think we'll be able to do? I, it's, I'm, I'm hanging in. But I'll tell you, I got, <laughs> why is he, why I, is I got a life thinking? calendar. You got, you know what a life calendar is? A calendar, a life calendar is where you so. make 90 years, assuming you'll make it to 90, but people do these days. And then you, you put little colored things for all of the years that you've already done. That's your memories. And then where I am now, and then what you have ahead. And then you can look at it as your trail to blaze. Well, I've done that. And I'm at least two thirds of the way through this show. But you know, whatever I have left, I'm optimistic about. Okay. And the really Draftsman Podcast is So we have 29 more seasons well, until yeah, maybe. you die. Yeah, let's figure. We, and, we, and we did 29 episodes oh, last. Oh, so, This is a fractal. I'll die right at oh, 90. God boom. willing. Boom. Die Fed on drop. camera. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. Are we ready to go? Run the, <laughs> run the intro. Play the intro. Play the intro. Play the intro. Let's be back. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Well. Well, we are back with season two. We are. Sorry for the wait. I know you guys missed us. Well, you trust that they missed us. That's what they all tell me. Oh, good. Good. I'll believe them. Except some of them. I am also a little sick. I gotta warn You're everybody. a little sick. A little bit. I got sick last night. I got really? home. And my throat started hurting. And I was like, crap, we're recording tomorrow. Hey guys, Future Stan here. Just want to remind you, this episode was recorded back in January. As I'm watching it, I realized the unfortunate coincidence. And I wanted to let you know that I had a simple cold and I'm fine now. Thanks. Was it the stress of recording? I don't know. Mm. I'm not stressed out. Yeah. I feel fine. Yeah, you don't seem like the type to get stressed out about I, stuff I get like stressed this. out. Okay. I'm not stressed out. Well, <laughs> well good, but I'm right sorry now. you're sick. Yeah. We'll, we'll do what we can do. You're going to have to carry this whole series, Marshall, the next six episodes. All right. Art just, school. We'll what? set a little pillow up for you, put a blanket on you, get some hot cocoa. That sounds actually really good. The more often you're sick, the more people treat you nice, so the more sick you are, the better relationships you'll have. Yeah. What were the themes of the last season? I don't remember. We we talked. It's been so well, long. Should I, should I take a crack at it? Yes. Okay. There was a lot about upping your skills. There was a lot about creative achievement, about how one does better as an artist, and not only as an artist, but as a professional. And a good deal of it was uh, helpful hints mm -hmm. about how to uh, get your craft. These we also had like mental health stuff. We did? Yeah. We covered a lot of stuff. There were 29 yeah. episodes. Hey, I came across a <laughs> quote that uh, from Mara McAfee, do you know who she is? No. She was a movie star. Is she related to John McAfee? Is it, is it pronounced McAfee? The John McAfee is pronounced John. Oh, I don't know, know it might be her. that I've got it right. I, 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 don't I have no idea. Are. She became an artist, she became an illustrator. Uh, after she was a movie, usually you would not think somebody would be a movie star and then they say, now I aspire 
to be an illustrator, but she did. She did Jim humorous. Carrey. Who did? Uh, Jim Carrey. But yeah, he's like a fine artist, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's what she says in this book that uh, collected her, her illustration work. The two most important qualities necessary for becoming the best at something are what sound the dullest, patience and discipline. I think to become a real artist, you have to have the patience to be ignored, even ridiculed for years to persevere quietly with only the joy of working and the faith in yourself to sustain you. You need the discipline to spend years on the unimaginative, uncreative aspects of art, such as mastering anatomy and painting techniques. Mara McAfee or McAfee. Okay. That's kind of what the whole 29 episodes were aimed toward. Interesting. Were they not? I guess so. We have made a separate YouTube channel for this podcast. It is no longer part of the Proco YouTube channel. Mm. So if you're listening on a podcast app, it doesn't matter. <laughs> is it a good thing that we're not on the Proco channel anymore? I mean, there's, we didn't lose anything, did we? We'll probably get less views initially. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe it'll get more. Okay. Well, we'll I see. I have no idea. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about it. The typical advice is to make separate content that is very different into separate channels okay because then you're confusing your audience people that subscribe for lessons get podcasts and they they don't like it and then they don't watch it and then they don't get recommended the lessons because youtube thinks they don't like the channel anymore okay we should tell them that in the next like six ish episodes we're gonna be doing a series all the episodes are gonna be related um they're all gonna be about art school recreating art school if you don't go to art school mm -hmm. so this is gonna be all for the students right so if you're a teacher get out of here no wait 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 no. wait 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 <laughs> no i wouldn't say that i wouldn't say that nope i think that we should acknowledge a couple things one is this is mainly for students this is pre-art school students Current art school students who will never have time to watch this. Current art school students don't yeah, watch these. Do. They, no, they don't. They, they've got too much homework. And they don't do their people homework. People who've already left. The people who've already left, I'm not sure. I mean, they've left school. I'm not sure whether they want this necessarily. So who's listening right now? Uh, well, we've got those three <laughs> kinds of students. Uh, there's also the parents are going to want to watch some of these, I think. Parents are the ones who typically pay the bills for art school. So you would think they would care. Personally, I don't think the parents should get involved. Okay. Your well, kids are you grown have... ups at this point. Go away. Ooh. Just get out of here. Dan, that is <laughs> revealing a deep. <laughs> oh, no. My parents were great. They let me do. That's right. They did. When yeah, I, yeah. yeah. When I was of age. They did. They they gave me freedom but to if, choose what I wanted. Since, since part of this is why go to art school. In fact, that's what we're going to start with. The pros and cons, right? Uh, this episode is going to be mostly an introduction to the whole series. And we're going to talk about pros and cons of art school. Okay. I don't know if it is like this for you, but to, for me, the, it's not a matter of like yes or no. Mm -hmm. Art school is good. Art school is bad. It gets mm -hmm. a bad reputation in some circles. Mm-hmm. Um, where it's like art school is a scam. Um, you're not going to learn anything. A lot, you know, some people say it and they're very extreme on their, on their opinions. We're going to try to be yes. objective about this. Yes. Even, Even though we have opinions. We do. We have, we have opinions. But yes, we're very we're, strong opinions in your case. I, I do. But, but I think what we're going to do is take each side and, and be fair to it and also yeah. open it up to people say, Hey, you didn't make that case strongly enough. But we start the conversation by giving the pros and cons of the way most people who are going to go into the arts think that you're supposed to do it. They think you go to school, if you're going to be a lawyer, you go to law school, you pass the bar, you get invited into a practice. If you're going to be an artist, you go to art school, you get your degree, and then you get hired somehow and the only, the people who don't think that way are people whose parents uh, were in the arts were in the professional right. arts they they see it from a completely different angle than those who are outside coming into it is that a generational thing like was is there a reason for parents to 
be thinking that you need a degree no, for art? No, I don't, I don't think it's a generational no? thing. And yeah, the reason is... I don't is they, they thought it 50 years ago, yeah. and they'll think it 50 years from now. Yeah, it's just that most professions do require a degree, yes. and it's a good idea to get a degree. Yeah. Kind of just extrapolating from there, people yeah. assume that art also requires a degree to be successful. I know a couple who did not get degrees. Neither one of them did. They didn't like school really smart people, real hardworking people, real enterprising people, but they feel like they did not do as well as they could have if they had gotten degrees. And so they have insisted that their kids get degrees because they say, I don't want them to come up against you the talking about artists right now. Or? No, they are not oh, in the okay. arts. Uh, in fact, okay. one of their, one of their, uh, children has gone into the arts and we had some long conversations. And that might it. be true. They, they're, they might not be wrong that by their measure of success, their kids might be more successful if they got a degree in like law mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. They might be making more money if they're lawyers than if they're artists. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they might not want to do that. They might not be as happy. So it depends on what you mean by success anyway. Well, maybe we should go back to our mission statement. What's that? It was the one that we read awkwardly in our first episode, as you recall. And That uh, I read awkwardly? Well... Well, maybe I read it awkwardly too, but it was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the one that we both tried reading like yeah, 10 times and every single one. time was awkward. Yeah. Maybe we should just That's have. That's the one. Maybe we should just have a, uh, an auto read do it now. We just replay the most awkward version from last season that I'd we rather, got, that we probably cut. You could I'd rather show hear people an how read. far you've come now. Yeah. <laughs> By contrast, we're going to sound very smart right now. Yeah. All right. Let's play Marshall's most awkward intro from last year. You're welcome, Marshall. We're here. We're here. Here. We're here. here. <laughs> Champion feelings. Wow, we said hello. I know that some people, if there's a baby bird nest in their backyard, they might get rid of it because they don't want that baby bird, those baby birds. But there's something about the baby birds happening in my backyard that makes you feel like this is special. And I'm not just teasing. I really do feel like that tree, this apple, mmm, delicious. I love you. Wow, that was awkward. <laughs> do you remember the mission statement? It we had to artists. do with the things I've, that I already mentioned earlier. Is that if you want to improve your skills in the arts, if you want to better your craft and perhaps make your living in the arts, not everybody wants to do that, but some people do. Most people do, I think. When you're young, you figure, hey, could I make my living making pictures, coming up with character ideas, uh, going into uh, storytelling, making so I get the ideas for the characters and the stories. I shoot the photography. I design it. Uh, all that creative stuff. That's the thing that so many of us, when we were kids and when, when we were teenagers, we wanted to do this for the joy of it. And then to find out that not only do some people make their living with it, but thousands of people. In Southern California alone, hundreds of thousands of people make their living in the arts. So should we jump into the pros of going to art school? Uh, Lo, I want to say, say some, before we jump into the pros, I want to ask, I want to ask a question, which is oh, why right. do art schools exist? Because... No, let, let's take a moment here. <laughs> Whoa, why? Maybe I, wait, wait, wait. I, I, let me talk for a couple, couple, three minutes. <laughs> okay. Why do art schools still exist is what I should say. Because they still make money. I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, you just got to, you got to jump to the, that's right. Well, they are a Go business. Go for the jugular. <laughs> they are a business. But yeah. here's why I ask why do they still exist? I wanted to mention yeah. two things. One is that around 2013, Noah Bradley, who taught in art school, I, as I recall, he quit his job, left it. I don't know what happened, but he posted a blog, don't go to art school. I remember that and one. And everybody was reading that blog. And that blog had some strong words coming from something that a person would uh, not say unless they, they're pretty much ready to burn their bridges. Now, I've heard many other people mm -hmm. say it, but not put themselves out publicly on the line. I thought... This was getting so much traffic, so many people were paying, uh, paying attention to it, I thought this is going to damage art school's popularity. And right around that time, somebody sent me to a video on YouTube, 
And because I didn't know TV personalities, it was a person like Stephen Colbert. Uh, I, I, it wasn't him. I don't, I don't think it was. Jimmy but Fallon? This, it, it, mm, I, I don't know. Conan O'Brien. But whoever it was, it was not Conan O'Brien because I know who he is. Whoever it was, it was, uh, I believe it was a network television satire that talked about the worst potential majors for actually ever having a career. Uh -huh. And they zoomed right in on photography majors and illustration majors. And they went after illustration majors and they interviewed them and had them talk about their hopes that I'm going to make an, uh, a living at this. And it was, it was, making, it was making fun of them. They were uh, presented as the fools. And uh -huh. they, it showed how idealistic these people are. And then, as I recall, I only saw it once, it ended with you will learn more by going to prison and then they showed they showed what it would be like in prison and how you would be taught the real rules of the world and it was a it was in, uh, a live audience was observing this you know pre-recorded stuff and there was the live audience laughter and the thing went viral yeah and i remember thinking uh if everybody in the united states is watching this there is no way that the art schools including uh one that i teach at it's an art school are going to survive and Anyway, I thought this is going to destroy the ability for art schools to profit. And exactly the opposite seems, in my observation, to have happened. I have seen enrollments go up. I've seen more and more students say, I have got to get into that school. They care about it as if it's going to heaven. And uh, it did not make any difference. Well, because it was a joke, right? It, but it was a joke that put its finger on something that was based on research and that was also having a laugh at the expense of the naivety of students going into a situation where they think this is going to be my ticket to be a professional artist. Yeah. Why do art schools still exist, Stan? Because they still make money. Because they still make money. <laughs> they are not going to go away yeah. as long as they, they continue to make money. Which is not, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Like I said in the beginning, like I think that art school, it's complicated. There's layers. It could be good for some people. Some art schools can be good. Some art yes. schools can be bad. It, it's not a yes or a no. And the fact that they exist is fine. I don't think that's like a, hey, bad news. They're still around sort of thing. I think that So we're going to talk first about and, that, about the pros of art school, the pros, value of going. Because they do have value. They do? Yeah. Let's start there then. <laughs> I wanted to bring up that introduction. Yeah. Uh, for a reason. And that is that it is it is baffling that as much as there is negative talk about art schools, it is not affecting art schools' popularity. Yeah. I think nowadays more people are choosing a career that they want to do versus mm -hmm. a career that they feel will be, you know, will make them money. Mm -hmm. I think more people are starting to head that way. Just do what you art. love. Yeah. And the money will follow. Yeah. Right? That, well, I mean, it feels it, that it way. I don't know the, the yeah, statistics. You're, but you're, you're in a, in a, a privileged environment too. That's I mean, true. It, where there are some people who it's like, there's just no option to do that. But even in places like India, mm -hmm. where art is like, there's, there's like no, I mean, there probably are some good art schools, but I get emails and messages from people from India all the time. I do too. And they're talking about how there's no art schools yeah. around them. But there's so many people in India that are trying to study art. Yes. So even there that, you know, not necessarily a privileged. Yeah. We get, we get like, emails from people all over the world. I get them regularly that are asking, uh, you know, what art school? How do I get into art school? How can I get into art school in the United States? And so on. So that's why we're doing this is art school can be a project, a creative project. And we'll begin with why you would go to art school. What's the, the first pros. thing on our, on our list? Uh, well, it's one that you brought up, the family ritual. I think this is an important one. Yeah. One of the reasons why you go off to college is because it is emotional and it is ceremonial. This is the first time, presumably, that you're going to be moving away from the family. You're going to have new peers. You're not going to have the grown-ups on your case. Uh, it's something that there's physical traveling there and that is important in the awareness of okay i'm now moving toward the real world and i am hoping to get uh, a piece an opportunity of the privileges of the re real world because i'll be trained in something that people will pay me for 
You're also going into an environment where these are friends that are more likely to be your lifelong friends than your your childhood friends and your uh, uh, high school friends because they're sharing the profession. When people go into the same profession that you do, you tend to keep in contact more often. So that's the first thing that I would mention mm -hmm. is family ritual. Can I bring up the complete other side of it? Sure. So I never had that family ritual. Mm -hmm. I stayed with my parents until I was in my late 20s mm -hmm. um, because I went to art school 20 minutes away from my <laughs> parents' house. <laughs> um, I was lucky that I, there was a really good school very close by. And so I, I lived with them and I feel like for me, the way it ended up being, it was good that I didn't move away and that I had that goal of moving away. Mm -hmm. Throughout my 20s, I wanted to be independent. I was fighting for it just every day, trying to make a career that would allow me to afford my own place in Southern California. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a big motivation for me. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, so it depends you, you on your did, personality. You did less ritual. You still did ritual. You did what do you mean? You still did ritual because you'll have first meetings, first uh, first job where you get a job at Sony. You, you worked at Sony, right? Oh, of course. I had thing, events happening that would yeah. kind of be like signals for me that I'm becoming an adult. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't that specific ritual or where I'm like, I'm going, going away, away from yeah. the house, the home. Yeah, right. And I am now on my own. I, never, I didn't have that one event. It was like little things that pointed towards, let's get serious here. Yeah. Well, yeah. the ritual is of limited value. I mean, you can have great, big, elaborate weddings for marriages that don't work. And you can have secret <laughs> yeah. marriages that last an entire lifetime. So the, yeah. but the, the important thing about ritual is that emotion is connected with it and, uh, and witnesses are yeah. connected. I mean, it has become enough to where you've got, you've got fear and you've got hope. And the hope is based on the evidence that some people do go to this school and they go into the profession and the school has showcased those. So you say, I might be one of the ones who's going to go in and, and make a difference. And uh, it's, let's contrast it. Mm -hmm. The ritual of going to art school is something that people will celebrate. If you huddle in front of your computer for hours a day and announce at the family gathering that, what are you, what are you doing these days? Well, I'm, I'm studying uh, on the internet so that I can become a professional artist. You don't tend to get congratulations for that. Unless you're creating something while you're that you can Studying. show, yes. You, yeah. You've got product you can show, and then people yeah. might say, "Hey, this, that, yeah, that's how it happened with me." Like, oh, that's a nice portrait. Yeah. Oh, it's of your mom. Yes. Oh, I love your mom. <laughs> that I bet she's you've won so them over. proud of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you're staring down Charlie really intensely there. No, I was. I was thinking. I was lost in thought. Did I'm you? Sorry did you draw your mom? <laughs> At uh, some no, point? I never know. I drew Jimmy Page. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Jimmy Page was I my mom. I never did a family portrait. <laughs> I tried doing portraits of people and they were, uh, it was one of those things that I wasn't really good at it when I first started out, so I knew I sucked, so I gave up. But yeah. Oh. I, so I, you didn't I, get praise for it. Oh, I absolutely did not get praise. I, I got oh. praised for some caricatures, but I never got praised for uh, for likenesses. But, uh, likenesses that were trying to be serious because there was just something that was so I made everybody look like Albert Durer characters which, which is not the most flattering way to make people look <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, anything else about the family ritual I think that no. that's a that is one reason why you graduate from high school you go to college we see you off to college you have even a party for it people give you gifts people wish you well uh, mm. that is an important part of this next step yeah. Or not. Or not. Yeah. And in your case, not. <laughs> we didn't start with the most important ones. No. Let's move on to another unimportant okay. one. <laughs> oh, the, the least important <laughs> the one. The least important This one. next one is the one that's completely... Well, wait a minute. Oh, not... Wait. I, I the know phrasing, what you're Marshall. Go ahead phrasing. And say it. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Phrase, you, this is not the least important element. This, this is, is the, the one that art school... You don't go to art school because of this element. Yeah. Because you could get this elsewhere. Well, boy, we're really but dragging it out. Important. But this, this may be one of the most important elements. Yes, it is one it of the is, most important. It is the least important to go to art school to get this one. Yes. Boom. You got the phrasing right. Okay. Well, what would it be, Stan? Knowledge. Knowledge. <laughs> Knowledge 
is not the advantage of art school. You can get it all sorts of other places. Like where? Better. Like where would you go to learn art? Well, why don't we deal with that for an entire episode? Come on, just say it. <laughs> oh, oh, you want me? You want Marshall to say it? Oh, well, where would uh, you go? Let's see. The internet? Oh, no, more specifically. Yeah, oh, where, okay. where, where would they go? Proco 2.0 will be the... Or well, just Proco. Just Proco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like pulling teeth. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, you got me trained. I was thinking martialart.com. Oh, well, yeah, that too. But, but yeah, I don't I mean, have a thank lot you there. for suggesting proco.com as well. Yeah, although I'll charge $4 and $12 for mine, so. Well, yours is valued at $4 Whoa, and $12. Oh, man, <laughs> man, I didn't know you were going to do that. <laughs> you set me up. Thank you. You're such a good partner. Okay, now, uh, what's the next one? Uh, mentorship. Mentorship is a reason that you go to art school. And still one of the biggest reasons why school might be, kind of has a leg up on not going to school mm -hmm. is because it's it's difficult to find mentorship if you're not in a an environment like a school. Yes. I think in several years, it'll be much easier to find that online. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that because yeah. we've got an episode on, on uh, mentorship and community. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go into all of these in more detail in the upcoming episodes. Yeah. We're just kind of making a list yeah and we're painting a landscape yeah and then in the next few episodes we're gonna put some trees in there and and and, and i don't know where i'm going with that, that. You were, no you, you were you're starting to go you were starting <laughs> to get there and then immediately self-consciousness yeah kicked in. but we're gonna work where's on bob ross yeah. where is that doll we're gonna we're gonna help you with it charlie can you throw it over hey, here we need bob ross to paint the let, landscape for us let's define mentorship well, uh, do we have that written down? Yeah. Oh, I, a teacher there uh, with you, <laughs> looking and responding. Is that what you want? <laughs> ah, ah, Bob is here with us. Oh, good. Now, See, can you want to try the thing about He's got the, his happy tree. You want to start the thing about the landscape and we'll put trees in it later? No, I'm done with okay. that. Let's, let's move on. Yeah, mentorship is someone advising, someone uh, who's there with you and looking at your work and saying yeah. you need this yeah someone that can provide you personal feedback that can hold your hand yes when we were talking about the ai thing mm -hmm. we separated this because it, it needs to be separated where it's like a computer can teach you facts and math and stuff like that but a human has advantages where it could be like your big brother or mm -hmm. it, a human can be your big brother and it could deal with the you know the emotional side of it it could encourage you and it also, a mentor has personality. Yeah. It create, you know, mentors create variety throughout. Mm -hmm. Different artists will have different mentors who create different artists. Mm -hmm. And so we have variety throughout the world because there's a human factor involved of, you know, error and all that stuff. Now, you did a I, Comic Con uh, set of interviews on who was your mentor? Yeah, right. that was one of the questions. So you went yeah. after artists to ask them who who was the one who played that role in your life. Yeah, um, mentorship is cre is linked with the next thing that we would talk about as a pro of art school. A value of art school is that you need other people, and that's community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going into an environment where other people are going to study the same thing, and they're seeking the same basic direction to go into the professional arts. Even if you just talk about storytellers, musicians. Uh, visual artists, uh, painters, drawers, sculptors, all of those have more in common mm -hmm. than they do different, as different as they can be. Uh, and the main thing is that you're going into an arena of life that's hard to make a living at. So yes, being in community with other people who are at the same stages, or most of them are at the same stages of life, makes a big difference. Yeah, and one thing that we mentioned in season one that I think is really important, I wanna say it again, is that networking begins day one at, in school. If you're going to art school, it begins from that first class. It doesn't begin after you're done with school. Yes. Um, Let's talk about the difference between community and networking though. Okay. Community is where you are in communion. You are sharing together and working together with people. It can be good and it can be bad. Uh, we'll develop that later. I've got lots of stories of 
good community. I had very good community. I've seen a number of student groups who have had great community, and the interesting thing is it starts in school and then carries into their professions to this day where they're working and making their money with people that they went to school with. I also have many stories, few of which I will tell, of community that started bad and that damaged things for a long time, and that is where community is related to networking, yeah, is that you are establishing a reputation. Well, your community becomes your network. That's right, it does. But networking can happen without much community. Networking can happen just because yeah. you happen to be at a party and you met somebody and then they connected you with that. Some people who have given me the best connections that I've had are people that I don't really even know that well. I only know them because we, they introduced me to someone else. So they are yeah. two different things. Yeah. We will talk about this in more detail as well, but like, network like this isn't something that you can only get at school no. it definitely is easier because you're there in person you're making friends that are you actually can go out with and do things with um but there's online communities as well that do provide support for each other yes um i got an idea what's that let's do an entire episode on mentorship and community yeah we will we will do that. Lately, we're spending a lot of time indoors, and that can definitely put a strain on things. It's understandable why so many of us want to avoid going outside, but that shouldn't prevent you from being able to talk with someone in a time of need. That's where my sponsor, BetterHelp, comes in. They're an online service that offers access to over 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists. These therapists are there to provide guidance for things such as depression, stress, anxiety, relationship troubles, and more. You also have the option to conduct sessions by secure video or over the phone. And if talking is not your thing, you can even chat or text with the therapist you choose. Something I found that I like about BetterHelp is the articles that they provide on their website. There's even a new post that they released on ways to ease symptoms of boredom, depression, anxiety, and chronic mental health while indoors, and that's worth checking out. Right now, BetterHelp is offering all Draftsman listeners 10% off your first month with discount code DRAFTSMAN. To get started, go to betterhelp.com draftsman. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash draftsman. All right, here's something that art school <laughs> offers that's a big deal if you are lacking in money in particular is that they have equipment and resources that are expensive like rooms and parking lots and projectors and computers. All kinds of and, tools. Yes. And supplies. Models. Mo yeah, they provide you models to draw from. Yeah. Even refrigerators and microwaves make a difference. Yeah. Libraries. Yeah. All sorts of stuff that's there for you. <laughs> Equipment and resources. We would put those two together. Yeah. Should we go into any more detail or save it for the equipment and resources episode? I have so much to say about those things. I, I just don't want to, you know I what I mean? Too. I feel like as once we've, once we've mentioned, well, once we've looked at the table of contents, yeah. I can't just read it. I have to say, oh, 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 and here's this, 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 and, this, oh, and I got to tell you another, and, what, and also, and here's another side to it. And what we really need to do is just figure, we've talked about art school advantages, the family ritual, knowledge, mentorship, community, networking equipment resources now here's another one that's this is a, a big, big one. deal yes for art schools if for art schools one of the pro. reasons why you pay all that money is structure yeah deadlines on the school's terms why is it important that it be on the school's terms because when it's on our own terms we find that we don't really have to meet it and video games are so much more fun it's just so much easier <laughs> but when you've got an outside entity who says no this is the way it will be that's the way the world works anyway and so to meet those terms and to have a structure set up that says you get advantages if you meet those terms and disadvantages if you don't is a scenario that echoes what the real world is like and that is one of the most important things about art school it offers structure 
specifically in the way of projects and deadlines. I like how you just said how the real world is like. Mm -hmm. For who? How do you mean? Well, I, I went to an art school that didn't have much structure at all. You choose your own schedule. Mm -hmm. You could take one class a semester if you want. You can take 10. You can take mm -hmm. 12. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You, you pay for that class, you can take it. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much structure. Okay. There was no homework. Okay. So I don't think I had this part. Okay. Even though I, I went to an atelier, I didn't go to like a college. Yeah. And to me, the fact that I had to create my own structure yeah. feels like it was more of training for the real world <laughs> than having someone provide me the structure. Oh, Stan, you reveal So your... it depends on who, who you want to be. You reveal your bias. Yeah. I, I, oh, the real world is that companies will give you but projects we are and you trying, follow people's... We are trying to be objective to both sides. Yeah. And so uh, if I reveal my bias, I've got the exact same bias. Let me just allude to one example. Two students who took my class who have had great careers took it at a time when I, I was allowed to not give any homework to students. But those two students took the class and they made up their own projects and they went just miles, miles, miles ahead of everybody else because they were self-motivated. Yep. But that does not mean that there is not value in submitting to someone who says, we will be your motivators and you will have punishment if you don't meet it and you will have reward if you do meet it. It's true. Because that's how you get hired typically. Yeah. And you don't really get hired. No, I just wanted to say that saying that's the real world. Yeah. You know, it's if that's the real one world, part of the real world. Yeah, if you want a job, it's yes. the real world. If you're gonna uh, start your own business. Yeah. And it depends different. on your personality. If you're a self-starter, you want to, you, you know, you want to do your own thing. You need to be able to create your own structure. Yep. If you can't, then you're not going to, you know, build your own company or do well as a, um, uh, what do you call it? Freelancer. Um, but if you think that you're someone that could be, uh, do really well in a job environment, Mm -hmm. where you follow instructions really well, you let people make the big decisions, but you execute really well. Mm -hmm. You can take someone's instructions and just do a phenomenal job with it. That's fine too. Mm -hmm. It's not one that's right, one is wrong. I think no. you just have to figure out who you are. And and uh, again, uh, back to the advantage, we're on the pros of art school, the, the, the value of this. Yeah. If you have students, if, or excuse me, if you have teachers who hold you accountable, uh, if you, it's not a movie I recommend, Art School Confidential. And yet I, <laughs> God. Have you seen it? But Yeah, I remember, I was pretty young. I yeah. remember it being, getting kind of weird towards the end. Is that? Yeah, yeah it's, it's not a movie I recommend, but I feel like everyone going to art school ought to see that movie. I mean, if you can't take two hours to watch a movie that is a truth-telling movie about what it's like, and one of the things that art schools tend to do, not all of them, is the way they grade is not real world at all. It's as far away from the real world as it could be. And is, the movie is not accurate? Is the that, movie is accurate. The movie is accurate. To okay. show something about what happens, how, how, they, how it works in grades. And I can tell you from, from my own experience that if, you, if a teacher holds students accountable to anything like a professional standard, uh, that teacher can get in some trouble for it. So it's, uh, it's one of those things that my attitude, I do give students projects now, I do give them assignments, I do grade them, I do my best to hold them accountable to the specs of the assignment and so on. The way it works is that you are hiring the school and you are hiring teachers to play the role of the client. You are the client. You are giving them the money. And if they're going to do a good job, part of their job is to really hold you accountable. And then when they say, no, you didn't do it. No, you didn't do it. Rather than being upset about it, the better thing to do is you're holding me accountable to the real world because I'm going to get out of this bubble this ivory tower, I'm going to go out there where the battle is real and I want to be prepared for it. So the teachers who try to hold you accountable and don't give you flattering grades, those are the ones that are serving this 
function of giving you structure, deadlines, and accountability. Uh, that's, to me, a, a, a reason to go to school. Mm-hmm. In fact, I know of people who have done well, who took classes only because it gives them a deadline. They didn't have to meet it, but they figured, hey, if I don't meet it, you know, I'm, yeah. I, I don't get to put it up on the wall. And that was enough to keep them going. Cool. Hmm. Maybe we should uh, orient here. The, the objective of all of this structure stuff why structure so that I can be whipped into shape, whipped into shape for what? To get skills. The whole thing of this is supposed to be that it's hard to get skills. If you've got a school that helps you to get your craft up, that's what it's supposed to be doing and, and other things too, the networking, the community, the uh, professional opportunities, internships are a big deal. Those are re- they can be really valuable. Some okay. companies cannot give internships that are formal oh. internships unless you're registered in school. I think okay. in some cases you have to even be registered full time. Interesting. Internships are a great way to enter the industry. Uh, one art director at a big game company told me, "We love interns. It's a six month yeah. interview." You've got them there to observe how they interact with other people, whether they're good workers getting them for a, a, a really cheap or for free. Mm-hmm. The students are excited about it that get the internship because they've entered the big company. They actually made it in the door at least to be invited to help with something even if they're not making their money with it. And I've seen many un- internships turn into careers because the students who got them and all the students I know of who got internships deserved them. They mm-hmm. just they were they were good workers. And uh, they, they, even if they didn't turn into a job there right away, they did give them enough experience, had enough good references to where it led to other things. Right. So internships is another reason. Well, then I got lucky because I got an internship um, as a senior in high school gr- the summer after I graduated from high school. Tell us. The, well, I, I had an internship at... You knocked um, Bob Ross I, right yeah, out Bob of this. Bob's <laughs> away. Bob's away. All Bob's he did away. was just fight in a war. <laughs> um, I got an internship at Sony Online Entertainment for like three months right after high school. What was, was the title because, of it? What was the title of your, your position? Oh, geez. I think it was supposed to be for animation because that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was exiting high school wanting to work for Pixar, mm-hmm. hoping to get into CalArts. Mm-hmm. I didn't get into CalArts, mm-hmm. never worked for Pixar. Although I, they have offered several That's times right. they for call, me to I remember they called you while we were sitting together talking. Yeah, which makes no why sense. did you come up there? <laughs> Can you come teach a gesture <laughs> to the Pixar animators? Like, what? Yeah, no. That's I, delicious. No way. <laughs> you wouldn't hire was, me earlier. Oh, I didn't. I never applied. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've never applied to Pixar. But right. um, anyway... Yeah, I wanted to be an animator, so the the inter- internship was supposed to be for animation, but I only animated one thing there during that time, which was a, a walk cycle for a unicorn. <laughs> was it was it good? I don't know. They didn't give me feedback. Okay. Um, but it was, I mean, maybe they might have given me feedback like, oh, cool, great. Mm-hmm. I don't think they used it. It was probably like, give the intern a walk cycle. Mm-hmm. Let them practice, which is great. I, I got to practice animation. Mm-hmm. But most of the time that I was there, I was actually modeling, 3D modeling. Um, they would give me a, a set of characters that all had different body proportions, right? Like tiny people, big or oak, mm-hmm. orcs, or, orcs, ogres, ogres. What? No, orcs, right? EverQuest. Orcs. Oh, orcs. EverQuest, yeah, orcs. Um, and, and you modeled them? In- I, no, they would give me these characters, and then they would give me one like piece of clothing. Mm-hmm. That they all had to be able to wear if they picked it up. Okay. You know what I mean? And so you modeled it in what? In a 3D program? Yeah. So they would give me like a neutral one. It's kind of like a generic body proportion. And I had to like change all the proportions of these of the clothing to fit all the characters. In what program? It was in Maya. In Maya. And you yeah. already did you already know Maya? Well, I did. I yeah. learned it in yeah. high school. Uh-huh. The basics. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway... That's well. That's interesting. So yeah. you you uh, for three months you were there, and one of the things you got to do was practice what you had yes. learned in high school in a professional environment. But that's not the thing. The best thing I got from that internship. Yeah. What was? It was realizing I don't want to do animation, uh, and that well, not that I don't want to do animation. It was realizing I don't want to work in a an office environment. Oh. Because that's what I was. That's where I was headed. I was going to be working in a, you know. 
an animation studio doing animation or modeling or whatever I start out as. And I realized like, nope, no way. Good to learn it then. I'm going to suck at this because mm -hmm. I'm going to hate it. Yeah. So I've seen I that didn't... happen with I've seen that happen with students too that they, they get their first job and they say this is what I went to school for yeah I don't want to do this job yeah it's not that I don't want to do this job I did want to animate uh -huh. and I did animate for several years after that on my you know my own projects but it's just that I didn't want any job yeah that I mean, you don't want to be problem. in an office where you've got to go there every day and it's somebody else's uh, project yeah. and you're a cog in a wheel. And when you say you, you literally mean me, you, yes, me, right. not no, the right. big you. Because some people want yes. exactly that. Yes. And you yeah. got to incorporate 3D animation into Proco anyway. That was intentional, yeah. Well, we've talked about that. We've gotten through a list of the values of art school. One more thing on structure, though. Mm -hmm. And um, so I feel like college or schools, they give you structure, but even then you need to have a little bit of self-starter mentality and do more than what is assigned to you. Mm -hmm. Do your own thing as well on top of it. Mm -hmm. So you get a, an assignment, do that. And then what do you, like, what do you, what else do you want to do? You know, go beyond the instructions, follow your own path and do extra. Hey, I got an idea. Yeah. Why an don't episode. we include an entire episode on... Marshall, stop it. If you go to Are art you, school... You're not allowing me to say anything about these topics at all. I, I'm plussing it. I'm saying yes and. I got an idea. We could devote an entire episode. We to, will. If you go to art school, here's how to make the best of it. Yeah. That would be the one we'd end on. Okay, so this episode is yeah. the pros and cons of art school. Yeah. And we will deal an entire episode with knowledge... Yeah, knowledge and structure, then we're going to do mentorship and community. Okay. And then another episode on equipment and resources. Okay. And then one episode on if you do go to art school, if after you've sat through four draftsman podcasts <laughs> where we've talked about art school as project. About recreating art school. Yeah. Taking responsibility for your own education at a fraction of the cost of art school. If you decide, no, art school is for me then some advice for how to make the most of it. Yeah, because some people are going to go to art school either way. Some people are already in art school. It's their first year. And it might be a good idea. Now, let's dedicate an episode to those people. How do they make the best of it? Yes. How do they make sure that these four years are not wasted? It's that... an investment now. Yes. Yeah, you're going to spend this much money. I'm going to make get everything we can out of it. Okay, but we've left out probably the most common motivation for why people go to art school having yeah. been around thousands of art students in art schools and colleges and universities that when you press them for why you are here mm. the most common answer and it is drugs and parties <laughs> well actually that that <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> there was an art school I taught in the, f the first year I taught in it. That was so pretty much the motivation. Yeah, it's like, list? I've heard. Because oh, the drugs episode is going to be so popular. Well, um, we pulled the rug out from underneath that one. Just kidding. Where it's do we not, go now? It's not drugs and parties. What a was, degree. It's a degree. Yeah. That is the primary motivation that I, or maybe not the primary motivation. The primary mo motivation should be to get a career. But the most common motivation and what we're going to get to when we, we're going to talk about the degree, that's what you really see when you put the litmus test on this student. What's most important to you? It is to get that degree. All right, guys. Well, this episode went on for way too long, so we're going to split it in half. And in the next episode, we'll continue with the cons of going to art school. Yeah. The no, 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 you shouldn't go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah all right okay. go subscribe to our youtube channel give us all the likes and the hearts and the tiktoks all you young kids bye-bye thanks